Sure, Doctor. Ready? <clears throat> Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today for the Autodesk Infrastructure Modeler webinar. My name is Lawrence Vaughn, Government Account Representative here at CAD One, and I'm also joined by Brian Haley, a resident PE. If this is your uh, first time joining us uh, through this webinar, thank you. Uh, if you've been with us this morning, uh, thanks again for joining us. Before we get started, we have a few slides to uh, kind of cover, just in case you haven't seen them yet. First off, we do want to make sure that everybody can hear us. So on your right side, the uh, taskbar pane there, if you can raise your hand just to let us know that you can hear us, that would be great and that would give us reason to continue. All right, thank you everybody for, uh, for raising your hand, thank you. And also, this is the navigation pane where you submit your questions, so please feel free to type in your questions uh, throughout the webinar. We will answer them, answer them as we go, uh, most likely uh, live, and if not, then we'll uh, let you know, we'll chat back and let you know, we'll uh, take it offline and get back with you then. Also, we do uh, every month, just a reminder, we have uh, several training sessions here at our location. So as you see, for March and April, we do have a lot of upcoming classes coming up uh, for surveyors, a general update, fundamentals, style, and also a good field to finish in Wyoming. So if any of you are anywhere near that area or able to make it up in that area, that would be great. Just uh, give us a call or uh, account, uh, call your account representative for more information about that. And also for promotions. Autodesk has a demand more promotion that is coming due in the middle of April with 0% financing. So uh, ask your account rep for more about, uh, more about that. There is only a limited amount of funds available for that program. So if you are looking at getting into something new or upgrading your license, now would be a good time to, to look into that. Also to upgrade to a suite version, for instance, uh, infrastructure design suite, which would include the uh, program that we're going to be talking about today, infrastructure modeler. There is a, a fairly large discount for that as well. And then, as I mentioned, the suite includes the a free version of the infrastructure modeler, which is exactly what we're going to cover today. And with that said, I'm going to hand over the floor to Brian Haley. And uh, the floor is yours, Brian. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lawrence. Um, so today we're going to be talking about Autodesk Infrastructure Modeler. This thing is a really slick piece of software. Uh, I like to think of Infrastructure Modeler as a combination between BIM and GIS. BIM. Ooh, what's BIM? I'm sure we've all heard the th term thrown out there at least once in our lives. Uh, building information modeling. Huge in the architectural world. There's a door. So it's a door. It's not just a bunch of lines. It is a door. And when you select the door, it tells you it's a door. So Infrastructure Modeler has BIM capabilities, but it also has GIS capabilities as well. I can connect to all this great GIS data, and I can visualize it, make it pop, and really see what this GIS data is. So here we've got the infrastructure modeler. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and create a, a brand new infrastructure modeler file. So where do I want it to be stored? What do I want to name it? So I'm going to name this one uh, after noon demo. Yes, I can type. All right, so you can see the coordinate system. We can assign a coordinate system. It is geospatially accurate. So this stuff is in North Dakota, so I'm going to use uh, ND83-NF. I think that's the right line. Let me double check here. Got to check my notes, make sure I'm typing in the right number. Yeah, that's it. ND83-NF. Now, I'm also going to define my city extents. I don't want to see everything in this coordinate system. So I've got actually got a, a file here. It's just a GIS file, and I'm going to use this to help me define the extents of my city. So you can just load this. Let me go find my file. And where is it? GIS data, that's where it is. Model extents. So this file is just showing me, it's just going to take the coordinates, the maximum coordinates of that file, and load them in here for me. That's all that's doing. Select OK, and it's going to go in and it's going to create a new 
file. Now, what kind of a file is it creating? Well, it's creating a, it's actually creating a, a SQLite file. So if I go show you one that's already created here. So here are my infrastructure modeler files. So as you can see, they're sweet SQLite files. And the SQLite file, it comes with a folder, and in this folder has all the files that it needs for the SQLite file. So it's in the process of creating all these files and this SQLite database and all sorts of fun stuff right now. And here we are in the interface. So the first thing I want to do is I want to bring some terrain into my drawing. I've got a couple of different sources of terrain. I have, let me go ahead and uh, connect to it. So I'm going to connect to an IMX file. So Autodesk IMX. So what is an IMX file? Well, basically an IMX file is a file that you can export out of Map or Civil 3D that you can then directly import into Infrastructure Modeler. So let me go ahead and grab this IMX file. So that is a surface. So here's my East Riverside IMX file. And it's going to connect to it. Now, because this came through from an IMX file, Infrastructure Modeler knew what kind of file it was. It knew what it is. So if you can see, it comes in configured. And it comes in as terrain. Now, if I want to see this, I just need to refresh it. So I right click on it and I refresh that data. So it's going through and actually calculating and getting ready to display this particular file. And it'll be done here in just a moment. Doing a lot of math right now. You have to give it, you know, it's processing quite a bit. It seemed to go a lot faster when I wasn't doing this in front of a whole bunch of people, that's for sure. So it, it's added the data, it's now refreshed it, and now here I have my surface. And so you can see this IMX file came in as a surface, and you, you can zoom around and pan around real quick and beautifully in Infrastructure Modeler. Now, it's not coming through nearly as smooth on your screen, just because of the web interface, but on my screen, you know, panning and zooming is really quite smooth. It's not jumpy at all. I wish you guys could get a, a sense for how quick this is going on my side. Now, I've also got some more data, so you can see down here, I've got uh, some lacking of data down here. I have another file that I want to bring in. So this is, in this case, this is a TIFF file. It's a GeoTIFF. So I'm going to bring in this TIFF file. So it added the data. And let me go ahead and configure it. So as you can see, oops, wrong one. So as you can see, this is currently not configured. So I'll go ahead and configure this. A couple of things I need to do is the, the geolocation. I've got a, a warning symbol here. So what coordinate system is it in? Well, it's in the same one. So North Dakota 83 north foot. And in this case, I actually want to scale it by a factor of 3.2. Yeah, feet to meters, right? So I'm going to close and refresh this. Again, it's going to do the same thing it did with the other one. It's going to go out and grab the data and process it and put it into the model for me. And now you can see down here in this area, I have surface down here now. So it didn't create a new surface, it just added it to the surface that we have in infrastructure model. So there's only one terrain in here and it added it to it. It combined them together. And uh, this, is, this is really cool because you can do all sorts of really great things with this. So I've got more data. I want to see the water areas. So I can add many, many different types of data here. So in this case, I have an SDF file. You could have, this could be also be a shape file from Esri, but in this case, I'm going to go with an SDF file. An SDF file is kind of a, it's the, the Autodesk way of storing GIS data. So let me go find that file. Oh, so it's under SDF. 
Where's my SDF files? GIS. Yeah, right here. So water areas. So I want to see the areas in my project that are in water. Now when I bring this in, you can see it had no idea what this thing was. It's set to no feature type. It doesn't know. All it knows is it's a shape file. I have to tell it what it is. And again, I do that by configuring it. So I go ahead and configure this. I, I can rename it. I don't want it to say hydropoly. That's kind of silly. Uh, I want it to say water areas. The type. So what is this? You know, several different types here. So in this case, this is water areas. Right? I can give it a name. So I can use fields from that GIS data to give the ob pieces a name. I can do the same thing for the description. So maybe that would be another thing in here. Um, I'm not going to go through many of these. The geolocation, you can see it picked it up from that SDF file. So I don't have to worry about that. I've got several different things. I can put in tool tips and tables, do scripting. But when I'm done, I'll just go ahead and close and refresh this. It's going to take that and it's going to stylize it as water. And there it is. And it's actually kind of cool. It actually gives it a, I don't know, well, well you guys can see this on your screen. Right? But it, it looks like water. So it stylizes it and makes it actually look like water. Now I also have a TIFF image that you know just kind of helps me visualize it. This could be an aerial image or something along those lines. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a, another raster file. Now in this case it's not a, a surface. It's not a geo TIFF. It's just a TIFF. It's, it's an image. So I'm going to go ahead and add this. Again, I need to configure it. So I go configure the, this property. Again, what is the coordinate? So North Dakota, NAT 83, North Foot. And when I do this, what you'll see is, as soon as it's done processing, that image is draped onto my surface. And again, it's very quick for me to zoom around, pan in, see things. And I, it's hard to see on your side, but as I zoom in and out, we have what's known as a level of detail display. So the closer I get in, the more detail is going to be shown. It's really quite... It's fun. It's like playing a video game. It's, it's like, you know, this is what AutoCAD should be doing, but it doesn't. That's okay. And, and so you just start building out your map. It's really simple to do. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out of this file. I've got another file that already has a whole bunch of data files attached to it. That way you don't have to see me attach data, attach data, attach data, attach data. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this. I can find it. There we go. Don't worry, it'll open up here soon enough. <laughs> I hope. So it's one of the nice things about doing a live demo. You can see by the time it actually takes me to do anything that it's live. Because if this was a video, I would have cut this out. So basically what it's doing now is it's just, you know, loading and collecting all that data. And it should open up any moment now. I hope. Uh-oh. I was having this problem earlier. I was playing with this file earlier and I tried to restore it from a backup and I was having this problem earlier. Let me... Um, I'll give you guys a tip. You don't have to do control alt delete to get to your task manager. You can do a control shift escape and it'll bring up your task manager immediately. 
And let's see. I don't even know what process this is. Let's see if I can just close it. So it's not liking me right now. We'll get this figured out. Go ahead and try and copy this file again. See? It's real life. Get rid of the old ones. And paste in the, the backup again. Hopefully this will work. Yeah, so in, in that SQL database, there's only 2,000 items that I'm copying over. That's nothing, right? Let me go ahead and relaunch this. Do you have any questions? Anybody, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Now would be a good time to ask questions. Ah, the choice of doing live webcasts. So Nick asked a good question. In the in the previous what we saw previously, the water disappeared. Was that just an order of view problem? Yeah, and that's because I brought the the uh, TIFF image in after I brought the water in. So it was actually being displayed on top of the water. I should have brought the water in after I brought in the TIFF image. You can change the display order, so you can change that around. And if I can remember how to do it, I'll show you. All right, so let me go ahead and try and open this up again. Good question, thank you. Let's keep our fingers crossed here. Lawrence has got his legs and his arms crossed. There we go, that's better. This is what it was supposed to do earlier. I think the problem was is I had come in here and made some changes to this database, and then I just took that old database and I copied it in and said overwrite the other ones, and some files got created and weren't overwritten, and I think that's probably what caused the issue. I believe one of these is the display order. There is a display order here somewhere. I'm not exactly sure remember where it is, but I, I know there is one. Uh, that's not it. That's not it. Yeah, it's someplace. So anyways, what I'm going to do here, I've got some information that was created in Civil 3D. So there's a, we're, we're going to be building a town over here in this area, in this valley. And we need to connect it to the rest of the city. So that means I need to build a road over the mountains to the city. And again, what we're doing here, this is conceptual design stuff. This is not a design software, this is conceptual. Now, I've got a lot, some other information in here that's really important to me. As I'm going over the mountains, I want to avoid sensitive animal habitats. I want to avoid forested areas. So I'm going to turn on the display of these. So I'm going to go to the, my model to explore, and up here I've got my base model. So this is the stuff that I referenced in, that data that I brought in. And what I want to do is I want to manage the, 
layer of visibility. So I can turn things on and off. And as you can see, my forested area and my animal habitats right now are set to not display. So I'm going to go ahead and turn both of those on, as well as my urban road center lines. Apply that. And now you'll be able to see my animal habitats, my forested areas, and things like that. So now as I'm planting this road over the hills, I know where to avoid. And here you can see I've got my road center lines. Right, so that's where the, the buildings, are, the road is going to be. Actually, I probably should left that off for now. Go ahead and turn that back off. I'll turn that back on later. But I want to bring in an IMX file now. Again, that IMX file has a bunch of civil 3D stuff in it. So I'm going to go connect to that data source again. So I'm going to connect to an IMX file. Right, let me find this here real quick. There we go. Civil IMX imports. And this is that urban development area. So I'm going to bring in everything, well, except for the corridors. I'm not interested in the corridors right now. And let me go ahead and refresh that. So it brought in some extra surfaces. So let me go ahead and refresh it. So when you bring the data in, you always got to refresh it. And what we should see is a flat area in this area pop up once it's done refreshing. And this is the surface that was exported out of Civil 3D. Unless, of course, I did the wrong one. <laughs> I think I refreshed the wrong surface. Sorry, guys. There we go. There it is. So there's our new terrain. Yes, it's very flat. But anyways, that's beside the point. I also have some utilities in here. So I'm going to refresh my utilities. So these are the pipes. And these are the structures for the pipes. So if I zoom in here, you'll see tops of my manholes. And if I pull this off into 3D view and I actually go under the ground, you'll see the pipes underneath there. So these pipes were brought in from Civil 3D. Yeah, I need to have a talk with whoever designed these. We had some issues going on here, but that's beside the point. So I would then continue to connect to data. I've got some other data that's already connected. I just need to go configure it. So I've got parcels here. Again, if I wanted to do this myself, I would then connect to that data, but I've already got it connected. So I'm just going to configure it. Now when you bring parcels into Infrastructure Modeler, it's going to be a coverage area. So I want to set this as a coverage area. The name of each one of those coverage areas is going to be based off of the name value in that GIS data folder. My description is going to be the building type. I've got several different options here. Uh, Geolocation, as you can see, it's already set. I don't have to worry about anything else. I'm going to close and refresh this. And in this area, you'll be able to see now all my different parcels. So now I have several parcels in here. I can select each one if I want to. And I'm good to go. Now I also have some buildings in here. So this is actually a building GIS file. So we've got a shape file that has the building areas. It's got information about the buildings. For example, how many stories the building is. So let me go ahead and configure this. I'm going to configure this one as buildings. So 
I want to see these as buildings in my data file. Again, the name, I'm going to do the floor plan. The description will be the, the model. You know, I can choose whatever I want. The roof height. So how tall do I want these buildings to be? Well, right now, as you can see, the units is in meters. So I want these to be 3.2 meters for each story. So if it's a one story, I only want it to be 3.2 meters tall. If it's two stories, I want it to be 6.4 meters tall, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm actually going to use an expression in here. So for the roof height, I'm going to create an expression. I'm going to put in a property. So I'm going to grab a property from the data file. And the property I'm going to grab is stories. So how many stories is it? And then I'm going to multiply that by 3.2. Now my roof slope, I'm going to have V7. Uh, the style, how do I want these things to look? So this is what the style is. So we've got several, many, many different styles here. So I'm going to come down here to my brick facade styles. So how do you want these buildings to look? So I'm going to use this polis style. Why? I don't know, because it looks cool. All right? The roof. How do I want the roofs to look? I'm going to use, uh, we've got roofing material here, so I'm going to choose, uh, I don't know, some blue slate or some slate blue. Again, I have my geolocation, I have my source. Now, what I want it to do, if I just leave it the way it is, it's going to come in at elevation zero because, well, buildings don't have elevation in the GIS file. So I'm going to actually drape them onto my terrain. So I'm going to drape them. I'll close and refresh this. Wait a moment. And now I have buildings. I have one story buildings. I have two story buildings. I have three story buildings. And this is pretty slick. Uh, let me go ahead and turn the roads on. So we've done the same thing for the roads already. So let me go ahead and turn that on for my model layer. Turn my roads on. And there we go. Starting to look pretty good here. All right, great. So I've got this piece of land here. I want to connect it to, well, the rest of the city. The rest of the city is way over there. So I've got to draw some roads in here. So now you, in Infrastructure Modeler, you, you don't always only get to analyze what's existing, but you also get to play around with what, what's new. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to create some new features. What is it that I want to create? Well, I want to create a road. So I'm going to create a road. I'm going to come in here. I want to tie into this road. Oh, about here. And I'm going to go pretty sloppy here. So I'm going to connect over here. See if we can shoot through the mountains here. Come up over here. Maybe down to here. And then we'll cut across this, the ocean. Now that's some serious cut. So as you can see, as I do this, each point that I pick gets an elevation on the surface. So if you wanted to be a little bit more accurate, you would have you know, picked some more points, but uh, I'm just going to pretend that I picked several hundred points through here. But let's take a look down here. As you can see, my road tied into those existing roads automatically. I didn't have to do anything to create an intersection or anything. It just did it. And it just laid out the rest of the roads. 
Now I can change the style of this road. So for example, yeah, I got a lot of cover over this. Um, what I probably should have done, let me go ahead and delete this. Let me do that again. I'm going to do this as a series of different roads here. Hey Brian, we have a yeah. question that came in. Uh, does the program allow for video recording? Does the program allow for video recording? Yes, it does. In fact, if anybody went to Autodesk University last year, you'll, if you remember the, the main stage, I actually created one of the videos for the crowdsource video using Infrastructure Modeler, directly not using any other software. So yeah, absolutely you can. So again, let me go ahead and create this road. Oops. Now, if you don't like the way that road looks, you can always use a different style. But I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and go with this style. And that's fine. So this time I'm going to kind of come out here a little bit. Maybe something like this. And I'm going to end it here. Probably should have come out further. Anyways, I'm going to pretend that this forested area doesn't exist. And I'm going to create another road. Connect it into the end here. And I'm going to go through the mountains. Boom. So I got the big cut now. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create another road connecting to the end here. And I'm going to go across the ocean or the lake or whatever that is. And the reason I did it this way is I want to show you the, the different styles that you can apply to these things. So I can grab this and I can go into my style palette and I can bring up different types of styles. So I've got uh, road here. So I've got different types of roads, and what do I want this to be? Well, I want this particular one to be a tunnel. So I can take that and I can drag it onto that particular feature, and it's going to restylize it now as a tunnel. So we can get a good look at this. And so it's no longer going through it, it's now going underneath it. So you can see that the tunnel there. Likewise, going across the, the lake. I, I don't want it to be a road sitting on top of the water. I want this to be a bridge. So I'm going to make this be a, uh, let's see, we'll do the stone bridge. And I just drag that style onto that feature, and it stylizes it as a bridge. All right, maybe that wasn't the best example in the world. All right, here we go. You can see it better down over here. I, oh yeah, I've got a, a nice wave going through my property here. It's not the best terrain model, that data that you could have got, money can buy. Let's put it that way. But again, this is GIS data, right? You guys know what GIS stands for? Yeah, get it surveyed. So you can start doing these different ideas and things like that. Now, over here, I've got this piece of land here. I want to start putting in some perspective thought things in here. This is the piece of land. I'm going to be developing this piece of land right here. So I want to start laying out some ideas. I'm going to go into my proposals. So I'm going to create a new proposal based off of the way it looks right now. So based off of my master proposal, I'm going to create a new proposal. So I'm going to call this one um, Idea 1. Idea 1. Give it a nice long description. So now anything that I add is going to be added to that proposal. And what is it that I want to add? Well, I want to create some geometry here. I'm going to create a building. So um, this is going to be a, a hospital, a school, a church, I don't know, a something. Now before I do this, my mouse. Let me come back up here. I want to change the style. I don't want to use the Heron style. I want to use a different style. So again, I can come in here and I can change the styles. So let's see. Let's do a metal and glass. We'll do a leer. I have no idea how this is going to look, but we'll find out. And then I can just go ahead and start sketching in where I want my building to go. Oh, yeah, as you can tell, I'm definitely not an architect. So something along those lines. 
So it automatically puts a building in for me. I have this beautiful building in here. Now, the reason I can see through it is because I'm still in my editing. If I went got out of the editing, you'll see it becomes a solid building again. Now, what does every building need? Well, every building needs a, a parking lot, of course. So this is going to be a coverage area. So I'm going to put a nice parking lot in, oh, I don't know, about here. Something along those lines. And so now I have this beautiful brown parking lot. Well, I don't want it to be brown. So I'm going to, again, stylize it. So I'm going to come over here to my materials. Let's see, is it on a... No. My materials, and I'm going to grab a... See, I've got roadway styles. So let's grab a... I don't know... This one here. And place it on that coverage area. And now I have a parking lot. I need roads to connect it. So again, I'm going to go create some roads. This road is going to connect to this road down here. Try that again. Create a road. It's about there. And there's my connecting road to my parking lot. I want to put some vegetation in here. So I, I can also create tree groups. A again, I'm going to pick the group that I want. So I'm going to do this dark red trees. Because that's a very common tree in that area. Nope, wrong spot. So I put some trees in there. I'm going to put some water in here, so I'm going to put in a water area down over here, a detention pond, perhaps. And now I can start doing my conceptual designs. Now, at any time I want to, I can always go back to my master proposal. thinking and try something else. So here I am back with a blank slate. So maybe I want to make this a park and I just want to make the entire thing trees. Again, I can always go back. So I actually, I shouldn't have done this. I should have created a new proposal first. So let me go ahead and delete that. Should have created a new proposal first. All right. And then I could continue to do as many of these as I need. All right, great. So you've done all this stuff in Infrastructure Modeler. I got this roadway design in here now. I want to take this into Civil 3D and actually start using this to help me design my road. So before you uh, move on there, we did have uh -huh. a question come up. It's a good time to ask. Uh, can you create section views? Can you create section views? Are you, Steve, are you referring to cross sections of a road or just a section of the sites? You can answer me here real quick. Well, the, of the sites. Um, I'm not sure if you can or not. I really don't know if you can create section views cut a section through the site or not. Something I'll have to look into. So, I don't know. Okay, great. So, uh, again, I've got all this great data in here. What do I do with it? It's time, it's time to start designing. Well, I'm going to go back into Civil 3D, where a lot of this stuff came from in the first place. All right, so here I am in Civil 3D. I'm just going to create a brand new blank drawing. There is nothing in this drawing. All right, if I go check out my drawing settings, now right, you can see the my units. It's no datum, no protection for the coordinate system. So there's not even a coordinate system assigned to this drawing. 
Now I want to connect to that data. I want to bring that data into my drawing. Now there's a couple of different ways of doing it. First of all, you can go through the map workspace. So type map w space. That turns on your map workspace. Turn it on. All right, remember this is a thing in land. If anybody used land desktop, when you first installed land desktop, the first thing you did was turn this thing off. All right. So I want to connect to some data. Well, what data do I want to connect to? I want to connect to a SQLite connection. So if you remember, the infrastructure model or data is in a SQLite file. So I'm going to go browse to it. There it is. That's the one we were just in. And I'll connect to it. And it shows me all that information that is in that SQLite file. So what pieces of that SQLite file do I want to connect to? Right. Um, I'm interested in my trees, maybe I'm interested in the roads, maybe I'm interested in the coverages and the buildings. I don't know, I'm just picking a few things here. I can then add that to the map and it adds it to my drawing for me. So there's that nice long road, right? I got some trees in here, I got some buildings. And it's just all flat 2D stuff. So that's one way of doing it. Now, I, I want to point this out here real quick. If I go back to my drawing settings, you'll notice that it did indeed pick up on the coordinate system of that SQLite file. So the first time you connect to data using the map data connect tools, it will assign that coordinate system to the drawing if it doesn't already have a coordinate system assigned to it. Now I'm going to show you another way to do this. So the way I just showed you, that was the, the tricky, the, the difficult way. It has also allowed you to pick individual pieces. If I just want to bring everything over, all I have to do is go find that SQLite file and just drag it into my drawing. And it connects to all that data for me. We have a question pop up on that. Is it can it distinguish between the proposals you created? Can it distinguish between the proposals? That's a really good question. And one I don't have an answer for. Let me try something here real quick. So when I connect to this, let's see if we get an option to see proposals. I don't remember seeing anything. No, I don't think there is. So I'm going to bring my roads in here, and we'll, really that's it. So I'm going to add those to the map. And so here I've got my roads, and as you can see, I've got uh, this data here. It, it's map data. Now what I want to do is I want to create an alignment out of this. Now I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this, but in Civil 3D, under your alignment, you can create a best fit and alignment. So I'm going to bring in some, grab some AutoCAD entities. And I've, it's been a long time since I've actually, I should have tried this before the demo. Oh uh, yeah, it's not letting me, so if I explode it, now uh, check out the feature. Yeah, so you check it out, and you explode it, and you just get a polyline. So I'm just going to do it for this piece here. And once you've got it there, you can... Actually, let me go ahead and do that for both of these. Just so you can see, I'm going to go ahead and check this out from the data source. And explode them, and again, I get polylines. So I'm going to create an alignment. That's fit. These are AutoCAD entities, so I'll go ahead and grab path one. And, well, that's all I have. I only have one path. I'm not going to do spirals. Uh, call it that, put it in that side, that style, those layers, etc., etc. And it goes through and creates an alignment for me. Now, I was pretty sloppy when I drew this. 
but you can see it, it does a best fit analysis on that. It'll get you close. Yeah, you'll probably have to come in here and make some adjustments to it, so maybe it'd make more sense if I did something like that. Yeah, if I did. Why isn't it let me do that? You have to come in and adjust this, probably because of this down here. No. Nope. That's interesting. Ah, it's that curve down there. That's the problem. So it, it gives you a great point to start creating your civil 3D data from. And there's a lot more that you can do with it. If you have files that are, have 3D geometry in it, you can bring that in and have it display it. You know, for example, I've got a, a building modeled up in the Google SketchUp program. You can bring that in and make it bring it into infrastructure model to see that building in there. So hopefully this gives you a taste of what you can do with the infrastructure modeler. It's a great tool. Again, if you purchase a new civil three or the, the infrastructure design suite, you get a free copy of this or 12 months. So it's a 12 month license of infrastructure modeler for you to get into and play with and figure out and see what you can do with it. So with that, do we have any more questions, Lawrence? Not this time. Uh, again, any uh, questions about uh, anything regarding this presentation, please feel free to type it in and we'll uh, answer it as we go. All right. Well, that's all we've got for today. So I appreciate you guys showing up. Hope you all have a great weekend. Get outside and enjoy this beautiful weather. Well, if you're in Colorado, that is. And uh, we'll see you next month for our next web series of webinars. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later.